How are you? Mick Wordley. This is the infamous Mick Wordley from Adelaide, uh, proprietor of Mix Masters Australia, and um, he's possibly Australia's greatest exponent of uh, ribbon microphones. How are you, Mick? Wow, that's a good one. I'm good. I'm showed out a bit, Brad, but I'm um, sure. talked out, so, if, you know, just talking dribble, but I'm I, good. I, I I'm saw good. you just five minutes ago talking tons, Making of, sense. Dribble, tons <laughs> of dribble to someone, but they thought it was sense. I know! Yeah. And I change the story every time. No, not really. No. This is the original RCA ribbon mic. That's right. And what model is this? Oh, that's a DX77. Okay, so this is like the original Ducks Guts ribbon mic. Not the Ducks Guts, the 44 was probably the original Ducks Guts, okay. and that was sort of like a, I guess you'd say a lesser version, but you know, that's a bit hard to say, but okay. for me it's the Ducks Guts, because it's what I started on. Sure, and you like you would still use this actual mic I still, for I've doing I've got three of, of those, and I'm trying to get another one, which are all fully refurbished, Yeah. even though it looks a bit old, that's, a, that's almost as good as, well it would be as good as a new RCA, and I use them almost daily. Nice, so, how would you compare this to the new ones? The new ones... The AEAs. The new ones just, to me, have, I guess, just a little bit more presence about them, but they're, they are different, but that, that is uncannily like a, a, an AEA R84, and um, I possibly wouldn't use that on vocals unless I wanted that really old sort of retro ribbon sound, whereas I'd use an R84 on vocals in a modern, in a contemporary sense, because it just has that lovely airy top end okay. that the, that this, the 77, probably doesn't quite have, which is not saying it's not great because I use it on other things that doesn't have probably an extended top end like, you know, tubers and horns and things like that. Sure, and you record a lot of tubers? From time to time, yes. Really? But they, they are remarkable. Um, you know, that Nicole's 4038 are remarkable on horns with a big bell and I used that on an album not that long ago on tubers. I used a few of them, you know, up on a tuba and it was stunning. That's, that's, a, that's a replica of an RCA 44, which is where we started which is phantom powered. So it has a, a modern high output so low noise. why do they power them? To bring the output up so that most modern preamps, you know, you have the right impedance okay. and you're getting the, you're sucking the best out of the microphone and ultra low noise. Okay. This guy is quieter than probably most condenser microphones. So it, it really is a different landscape. So you have all the advantages of a beautiful, smooth, natural ribbon sound and it's phantom powered so the output is really quite high output and you can use a lower gain mic preamp. Okay. You only need probably about 30 dB gain as compared to you need probably 70 or 80 with one of these. For sure. Um, rack to die for, it's sex in a rack. Um, Mick, can you take us through okay. what's here? From the top to the bottom. Um, this is all out of my own rack in the studio. So I just pinched these before I left out of um, my own studio. That's a Retro 176, which is basically an extended, I would call it a, a Universal Audio 176 on steroids because it does have other parameters which we won't go into now. But it's basically a very new computer, uh, computer, compressor. It's <laughs> Tuesday mornings, I know everything. And um, the construction is un not unlike a Fairchild 670 in its sound wow. and its nature. And that is a beautiful piece of instrument. Yeah. That's beautifully built, it's all hand built in, in the US of A, but it sounds, and Brad, while you're just standing here, I want you with your left hand to turn that knob and tell me what it feels like. Okay. You gonna do that for me? Oh, that's a proper knob. <laughs> it has a feel to it. Thank you. Now next time, and there's a lot of modern sort of concepts on there that actually work really well, but basically it's a very new tube compressor that sounds wonderful. The next one down is a George Massenberg designed modern style mic preamp with an equaliser which is basically fashioned on the 8200 equaliser, just a smaller version of it, which is a, a microphone preamp. Very modern, beautiful, very audiophile, fantastic. The next one down is a Wade Gerke uh, Chandler EMI TG1234 which is a clone or a, a replica of the original Abbey Road, what they called the curve bender. Um, the original curve bender looked a lot messier than that because they just made it in the studio, but this is basically um, a replica of an Abbey Road four-band equaliser. It's fantastic. I won't go into the detail of it, but it sounds wonderful. Can I just uh, check yes. the knob action there too? Yeah, you can. They're switches and not, 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 not knobs. Oh, but still. And still, just check them. That's all just... All recallable. Flush. And it sounds wonderful. And it's a different sound. It's a very glued sort of an EQ sound. Whereas we go down to the GML 8200, which is a, a more pristine audio file mastering type of tool, which has very, very demanding cue settings, which can go incredibly narrow to incredibly wide, very musical, 
the first three bands are all the same frequency, so you've got crossover frequencies that you can cut or boost, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic idea. The top and the top two are the same, so that's more sort of a mastering tool. I use it mixing and mastering, and, and of it's course, just this wonderful. Is George Massenberg Labs, isn't it? This George, George Massenberg Lab, who's here sort of visiting. living here for three days, yeah. <laughs> and um, that's wonderful. This one here is what's called a, uh, a an Empirical Labs Fatso. I call it on steroids because it's another guy from UBK or Kush Audio that has modified an original Dave Durr Fatso and has put extra sort of compression parameters in it. It's very unruly, very um, recalcitrant, but once you sort of start to, to get to know it, it's fantastic. And I always mix, all of my mixes I mix into a Fatso. What, you, you put your two bus through there? Yes. Right, and what, what will that do that um, it will give you, the normal Fatso doesn't? Okay, well, well just more choices. Okay. Okay. The, the, the way I use the normal fat so is it's is basically a tape simulator. Sure. Because I sold my half inch tape machine and, and then I really missed it. Right. Because it just didn't sound the same. So Dave recommended that I try a fat so and then I read that actually George Massenberg liked the fat so and was mixing into it at the time. I don't know if he still does but whatever. And uh, so I tried one and set my tape simulation to hitting about three or four and mm -hmm. I felt like my Ampex ATR would walk back into the room. Okay. So I love it. Yeah, right. Um, I don't use, do use much compression with it because I use that for my bus compression, but uh, we'll get to that. Anyway, that's that, that's beautiful. That's a Dave De, what's called a Little Freak, which is just his yep. four band parametric equalizer with the best de on the planet. Awesome EQ. Awesome EQ, just love it. I just That's in my vocal chain pretty much 100% of the time. Okay. Um, it adds air in the top end like you wouldn't believe yeah. in a modern sort of a sense. That is Dave's new ELI Mic E, which has only just come out. This is a gift that he gave me I've when I was in the States. One. And it is fantastic. It's just basically a very high gain mic preamp, digital control, analog signal path, and then basically a, a distressor on steroids purely designed around the vocal chain okay. with um, lots of what we call sort of upper harmonic toasting effects that you can blend in. And the best thing about it is, is it's got a blend Ah. Where you can have compressed, dry, nice. and wind it in as much as you like. So you can actually compress your first take vocals, but still retain a bit of the original signal for later compression. Not under two tracks, but just in its inherent sounds. Fantastic! It's my favourite thing at the moment. This is a um, a Vertigo quad bus compressor designed by Studio Technic in Germany. Basically, sort of fashioned in culture around a quad SSL compressor. Okay. But the beauty of this thing is it's got four compression paths. Two go around the side, he calls it a side, it's not really a side chain, but two go around the side and operate only on the bottom end below 90 or 50 cycles, oh. whatever you choose. Right. So, you don't have the pumping artifacts, and you can switch that in and out by the way, but you don't have the pumping artifacts that bottom end sucks out of a bus compressor. So you can set the compression from 90 cycles upwards to however you like to work it, switch in the 90k and then the anything under 90 cycles gets around the side and gets a much softer knee compression gotcha. so your bottom end stays doesn't pump the rest of the mix mm -hmm. it's awesome nice and that's my favorite compressor at the moment and i use that over the mix bus or mastering i don't have to touch it much but it, it adds energy and life into a mix like you wouldn't believe that's the original tg1 ab road compressor that weighed Gerke, that was his first thing he made out of Abbey Road, and that's about serial number two. Okay. And it's still got all the texture on the back telling us which channel is what that he wrote on there. And that's just basically a big blancmange compressor that will give you that Abbey Road, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon a sound. A blancmange compressor. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's, it's like a big sack of wet rice. Well, there you go. <laughs> There's the culinary aspect to that compressor. But it can be really quick as well, but it's wonderful. Cool. And down there, I just thought I'd bring a couple of my vintage bits of gear, just for people to drool over. For sure. That's a uh, rack, Rob Squire, who's my friend and associate. We get all these, and I've got a collection of them. Um, but this is a of uh, the 33114 Neve series, which is Class A B. But this is the broadcast series, which has got extended EQ and high and low pass filters. It's wonderful. And we basically rack them up, and I use them all the time um, for all sorts of things. And it's got a DI input as well, and an output uh, stage that Rob has put into it, and a, and a really beefy power supply. So we rack those up like all these. This is Quad 8 stuff. That's MCI 500 series, all racked up so you can have a pair of MCI 500 with their EQ or a quad compressor, whatever. Before we go, I just want to ask, have you got any stickers? Yes! That's all stickers. I've got. Stickers! I think I've got it. We've got the sticker off. There you go. Sticker. <laughs> Thanks Mick. No worries, thank you. It's been a slice.